Uh, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for taking time with Shimazu today. Uh, my name is Nicole. I'm actually from Shimazu Asia Pacific, based in Singapore. So this afternoon, I'll be spending some time with you to introduce uh, the Shimazu LC MSMS solutions, and especially how those solutions can help you in your research and your applications. Before we go into the details, let me just quickly introduce uh, Shimazu history as well. So if you can see here, Shimazu currently is the longest serving analytical instrument company in the world. We were established back to 1875 in Kyoto, Japan, and now we are close to 146 years. And at the moment, Shimazu is the only company who is offering both analytical as well as medical technology. So along this almost 150 years of history, Shimazu has actually achieved many, many different milestones. The most close to analytical industry will be, number one, at the year of 2002, Shimazu engineer Tanaka-san was actually awarded as a Nobel Prize in chemistry by using the multi-top technology. And this instrument so far is still in the market and highly recognized specifically uh, by certain applications, let's see bacteria uh, identification. And also back to 2009, Shimazu developed the world first ultra-fast mass spectrometry technology. Okay, so today our topic will specifically focusing the, on the mass, spec, uh, mass spectrometry technology. So if you can see here, this is what we are offering right now for all the ultra-fast uh, MS instruments from GC single quadruple system to GC triple core, LC triple quadruple system, and also the SAP MS uh, instrument as well. So all these are actually focusing on different applications, different analytes. So the reason we call it ultra fast mass spec uh, instruments is because all those mass spec instruments has the highest speed performance. So it will help you as a customer to reduce your total runtime to increase your throughput as well. So ever since we launched our first model of the LCMS instruments, we have been continuously awarded as the um, mass spec uh, Asia Pacific company of the year from 2015 all the way to 2018. Of course, in addition to these models we have, we also have uh, big instruments, which you can see here, the high resolution uh, mass spec as well. We call it QTOF technology. So again, even though Shimazu is a little bit slow in terms of launching the MS technology, but we are never be, um, behind in terms of the technology. So we always implement the most advanced technology to meet the customer's requirements. So today, I'll be sharing um, some basic LCMS principles, theories, and then I'll go into more advanced Shimazu LCMS technologies and also our total solutions for different applications. Starting with the LCMS principles. So I'm sure some of you already heard some of the terms. Gas phase sample, those specifically for volatile samples. Liquid phase sample, especially for non-volatile samples. And also you have metal components, right? And which so different analytes, which is actually will be applying by different technologies for the analysis. So for volatile sample, typically we are applying the GC or GCMS technology. For non-volatile or semi-volatile, we are typically choosing the liquid chromatography mass spec. Okay, and of course for heavy metal, for example, uh, for the uh, toxic metals, we are usually uh, apply the ICP or ICP-MS technology. So today our topic will be specifically on the LC-MS technology, which is actually applies to 80% of your total applications in the world. All right, so what is the lc in order to understand LCMS, this is basically are two terms, if you can see right here. You have liquid chromatography, which is short form as LC, and you have mass spectrometry. So basically, this is a two instruments combined and then become one technology. So this is how a typical liquid chromatography look like, okay? So you may hear 
high res uh, high speed uh, high pressure liquid chromatography ultra fast uh, ultra high pressure liquid chromatography and all these are using a uh, separation technology or separation science so what does that mean so that means so if you can see here you have a mixture of your sample of your analytes for example before you inject into the lc system it's in a liquid everything is mixing together after you inject your sample into the lc system if you give you a separation based on the retention time so what is the retention time retention time is the interaction between your analytes versus the column okay so different eluting time which is also refers to different retention time will provide the information of your analytes so this is what the liquid chromatography is doing so as we mentioned it's basically a separation technology it is all focusing on the separate of your analytes or of the mixture of the analytes and again in the whole lc system the heart the most important part is the column but of course every single part is important your mobile phase is important your column oven temperature is important your sample compartment is important but the core of the lc separation is actually done by the column itself okay and the retention time you are actually obtained from the lc system it's based on your analyze interaction versus the column okay so this is what the lc system is helping you to do so now view all the analyze or all the problems can be solved by can be separated by the lc system what if you change some of your solvent your mobile face you change your column okay and you have a mixture of your uh, analyze which you don't know what is inside in fact so for example when you adjust your mobile face when you change your column sometimes you will experience or most of the time you will experience retention time shifting for example your position a and b suddenly your position uh, b become a so all the retention time shift to the back in this case if you just based on the criteria of the retention time it is very hard to you for you to identify the peak okay and then sometimes when you have the mixture of sample which you have some unexpected uh, substance which is overlapping with your target analyze so this will give you an additional difficult not only for identification but also for quantitative analysis as well okay so in order to overcome all these challenges from the lc system itself then we actually add a mass spectrometry uh, detector in addition to the lc system so what is uh, ms ms stands for uh, mass spectrometry okay it is actually an analytical instrument which help you to give you uh, to help you to answer the questions of what is in your uh, sample mixture and how much are they okay so this is a simple is uh, mass spectrometry technology okay so the components inside of the sample it will tell you the molecular weight information sometimes it will give you the structure information of course you combine the ms together with lc you also have the additional information from the lc which is the retention time okay so again ms is additional detector on top of the lc system it gives you additional information especially on molecular weight molecular structure amount as well okay so there are many many different types of ms spectrometry sometimes you can call it ms analyzer as well so the most important or shimazu or the most widely used uh, ms analyzer will be single quadruple system in shimazu we call it lc ms 2020 triple quadruple system we have a different models we call it lc ms 80 series okay later you can see how many models we have 
And then you have high resolution accurate mass instruments, which is LC MS9030. We call it QTOP. Okay. Of course, on top of all these three, you may see some others iron trap, the Orbi trap, which is only from Thermo Fisher, and some other uh, uncommonly used MS analyzer as well. But no matter which MS analyzer, all the MS analyzer will give you the information based on the molecular weight. But in mass spec, we call it a mass to charge ratio, which we use M over Z to indicate. Okay, so later you will see a lot of M over Z information. All right, so now you have the LC system, you have the MS system, how you connect them together. Okay, so whatever you come out from the LC system is always in a liquid form. But whatever you need to inject into the MS system, because it is always in a, a, a vacuum condition, so it has to be in have individual ion uh, status. Okay, so in this case, we need some interface to connect LC and MS, which is the ion source. Okay, which you can see something is here. This is how the ion source works. Once your sample is coming from the LC system, which is always combining of your sample, your analyte together with your mobile face. Okay, so it is always in a liquid form. So you need to inject into the ion source or you call it interface okay and then the ion source will help number one to ionize all those target analytes and then into a charged droplets so at the same time you will because this uh, in order to do the ionization you need to apply a high voltage okay and at the same time we have a different gas we have a nebulizer gas Okay, which is guide your ion, guide your samples into a direction. And then you have drying gas because once your individual ions become a charged droplet, you want to dry all the solvent as well. Okay, so you need all those uh, components to guide your ions go into your mass bag instead of going to the other directions. But you also want your neutral ions, your sample matrix not go into your mass bag because the more matrix, the more sample go into your matrix, uh, go into your mass bag, it will create a lot of backgrounds. Okay, so basically, ionization stage, the ion source does three things. Number one, ionize, make sure your analyte become individual charged droplets. At the same time, you have certain gases drying gas to dry those individual droplets and also you have other heated gas to guide those ions go into or only targeted ions go into the mass bag for further detections okay so this is the ion source which is connect the lc and ms all right so ionization technique the ion source there are different types of ionization source Okay, the most commonly used or maybe 95% of the time you are looking at is the ESI source or some people call it heated ESI source. Okay, so this is can be applied for most of the highly polar uh, compounds. For example, the biomoleculars, the proteins, the pesticides, the pharma com uh, pharmaceutical samples, etc. And sometimes, uh, the ESI ionization, the electric spray ionization might not be sufficient for certain mid to low polarity compounds. Okay, for example, the steroids. Okay, and in this case, you can apply an APCI, the atmospheric pressure ionization technique. Okay, or APPI, maybe uh, very rarely you will be seeing this. So, the most commonly used is still the electro, uh, electro spray. Uh, or heated electro spray ion source or technique for the ionization. Okay, now you know everything, right? So basically, you have the LC, you have the mass spec, you have connection of the ion source. Actually, this is the ion source, which is very small right here. Okay, so the LC is basically using to introduce your sample into the ion source. Ion source is helping you to ionize those liquid sample and especially your target analyte into an individual uh, charged droplet and then 
sending them into the mass spec for further analysis through the uh, diesel vision line okay so here is all the ms systems which is under the vacuum system all right and your detector is also at the be at the very uh, uh almost at the very very last stage of the uh, ms system of course you have the uh, data analysis the pc softwares as well so this is the whole complete solution of the or complete system of the LC MS uh, system. Okay, so what is the data you will be looking at? So the black color is often refers to the chromatography uh, data. Well, mass spectrometry is often refers to particular points of the chromatogram. Okay, at this particular point, what is the spectrum look like? At this particular time, for this particular data point, what is the spectrum look like? So you can see the chromatography gives you our overall information. We also call it total ion chromatography. At the same time, when you do the extraction based on certain molecular weight, remember we always use M over Z mass to charge ratio as the uh, X to extract at certain point, what is the spectrum look like? Okay, so here you can see clearly. So on top, okay, this is a TIC, total ion chromatogram, okay? So as we mentioned earlier, not all the time, all the compounds can be well separated based on the LC technology itself. That's why we need to have the MS as an additional separation technique to help the system or to help to further separate your sample based on the mass to charge ratio. Okay, so this is a TIC, total ion chromatogram, and these two are the extracted ion chromatogram. What is called extracted? That means I only select M over Z value of 109 or M over Z value of 91, and then to see the retention time information, the peak response, the signal to noise ratio, etc. Okay, so this is the difference between the total ion chromatogram or the LC uh, chromatogram versus the MS spectrum. So now let's take a quick look of the individual uh, mass analyzer or mass spec technology. Okay, start with a single quadruple system. So what is a quadruple? So quadruple basically you can see something like this. It has four parallel rods. Okay, and the opposite rods has the same polarity. Okay, and each knot is applied with a DC and RF uh, voltage. So the ion travels okay, uh, in, uh, uh, in the space of the four parallel rods uh, from the ion source all the way to the ion detectors. Okay? So how this one will help? Okay, so when you continuously increasing your voltage, okay? your different ions will be selected pass through the quadruple okay but when you have a consistent voltage that means only one set of ions or one particular m over z value the ions can pass through the quadruple okay so this is called when you have the uh, change of the voltage you have the full scan data we call it full scan. That means you are scanning from low M over Z value all the way to the uh, high M over Z value. But when you only set at one voltage, consistent at certain voltage, that means we are doing a selected ion monitoring mode. Okay? That means only certain ions can be monitored and it can be selected and sending for detection, or sending for detector for detection. Okay? So this is also called a single quadruple system. So if you provide you a separation based on M over Z value, okay? If you help you to address the concerns, especially from the retention time shift, from the unexpected peaks from chromatogram, okay? So this will give you a high confidence in terms of quantitative analysis as well. Um, we there are still a lot of applications which is using a simple uh, quadruple single quadruple system. So, for example, uh, recently we experienced a lot of customers 
especially requesting on the uh, drug discovery by using the single coach post system. Okay, now we go into slightly more complicated triple quadruple system. So from the name you can see is triple quadruple. Basically, they are combining in addition to the single quadruple system, they are combining one, two, and a three quadruple together. Okay, so basically you have quadruple here. Okay, you have a collision cell. You have additional quadruple here. So what does that mean? Why they call it triple quadruple system? Because when the triple quadruple system was selected, was developed at the very beginning, it was actually combining three quadruple together. Okay, and now along the technology improvement, um, the scientists or the researcher actually uh, removed the middle quadruple and replaced with a collision cell. Okay, so what is the function of each quadruple here? All right, so again, as we mentioned, quadruple one, we also call it Q1. Okay, we can call it Q1. You can, the same function as a single quadruple system. You can do a selection of ions in your set it and over Z range. Okay. And Q2, they don't do any selection, but sometimes you can, that collision cell is filled up with the argon gas in Shimazu instruments. Okay. So this is only allows the RF to move the ions, or you can do a fragmentation for this ions. Okay. And then if you do Q3, the quadruple number three, okay, it is the same as quadruple number one, okay, and you can uh, uh, select certain um, mass or certain m over z value, and then send to detector detector for detection, or you only leave the RF function on. That means you just to move all the ions to the detector, okay. So for example. Now we are doing full scan, okay? So that means Q1 is just send the ions to the Q2, Q3, and then send it to detector for detection. So the same as the uh, uh, the Q3, the same works, the same function. No selection, just sending the ions to the detector. So this is the spectrum you can see, okay? This is the full scan. Full scan MS, what does that mean? So again, your Q1, you can select of the certain precursor ions. Some vendors also call it uh, parent ion, okay? But they are referring the same thing. And then in Q2, if you do a fragmentation with the argon gas, okay? And then Q3, if you just do the scanning of the product ions, okay? So like this, you do a fragmentation here, become a smaller, and then it will be sending to the Q3 for scanning. Okay, and then detect it for detection. So this is how the full scan MSMS data look like. Okay, and here is the most commonly used uh, uh, MRM mode for the any of the triple quadruple system okay so again q1 we do a selection to select certain precursor ions only and then we send those ions to q2 for fragmentation and then at q3 we only select certain product ions okay that means we only allow certain product ions ascending for detection not the rest will be going to the neutral or we will not be sending to a Q3. Okay, so this is how your spectrum look like. So if you compare MRM, we also call it multiple reaction monitoring mode. Okay, so if you can see the spectrum here is the best in terms of the peak shape, in terms of the peak response, okay, in terms of the signal to noise ratio. So that's why MRM mode in triple quadruple system, you will be using it for, I think, more than 90% of the time. You will be applying this mode in any of the triple quadruple system, okay? Because this is the most sensitive and gives you, uh, it gives you the best peak shape as well. Okay, so this is how the triple quadruple system works. And we have to understand a few terms right here. 
multiple reaction monitoring, MRM mode. It is highly specific, highly sensitive. It is the most ideal workflow for quantitative analysis, quantitation, okay? And it has the scan speed. Scan speed is also very important, okay? Scan speed, it actually refers to how fast the ions travel from entering the Q1 all the way to reach the detector, okay? And again, also sensitivity. Sensitivity, we always refer to signal to noise ratio, okay? And this signal is always response to a particular quantity of the analytes um, to the amount of the analyte giving in the response, okay? So those are the most important instrument criteria as well, okay? All right. Now, I think I'm sure you all know the workflow of the LCMS triple coach pole system, right? Separation from the LC, right? And then your LC will send your liquid sample for the ionization, okay? Always ionize first. Otherwise, the liquid sample, it cannot go into a vacuum condition MS, okay? And then after your each charged droplets, we will be sending to MS for detection. And MS1, remember, you select certain precursor ion, you're sending to fragmentation collision cell, okay, for uh, fragmentation. And then certain selected product ion will be sending to MS3 for detection. So I hope this is the most important workflow for any of the triple coach pole system. And please remember, this is the most sensitive, most specific workflow for any of the triple coach pole system. Okay, so now we, we understand the theory, we understand the instrument structure, what results you can give it to me. So basically, as we mentioned, if you give you a qualitative analysis and quantitative analysis. So qualitative analysis, it often refers to, we have to understand we can understand what is in my sample mixture, okay? By library search and the match, okay? And this is how you look like, okay? So this is your sample. You can uh, match your fragments and versus the library. And if you give you a potential structure of uh, analyte. And also, he also tells us what is the amount. That means it's a quantitative analysis to understand what is the amount in my sample, in my mixture, okay? This will request by building up a calibration curve using standards, and then check on the response of your unknown samples uh, by peak area most of the time, and then find out what is the possible amount, what is the possible concentrations. So in terms of concentration in LCMS, um, we are usually using because it's very sensitive, very, very specific instruments technology, right? So we always refer to PPB parts per billion or PPT parts per trillion as a unit, okay? So this is how the LC MSMS will provide uh, you when it's actually applied in your application or in your research, okay? All right, so back to Shimazu's advanced technology we have in terms of the LC MSMS uh, models. So as we mentioned earlier, 2009, the first model of the ultra fast uh, MS was developed was as, uh, by Shimazu. Okay. So ever since then, we every every two or three years we will be improved. We will be having an upgraded models based on the sensitivity. Okay. So. Currently, we have a few key models. So for example, we have 8045, okay? Compared to the first generation, uh, the sensitivity improved about almost 70 uh, times, okay? And this was launched at the year of 2016. And we have 8050, okay? And also last year, we launched our most sensitive, most robust model, LCMS 8060NX, okay? So those three, 8045, 8050, and 8060NX are the key models from Shimazu LC MSMS uh, product line. So the good thing is we are able to provide 
uh, free on-site upgrade for certain models. So if you're interested, you can uh, always contact us. So why we are combined, uh, why we are doing the free upgrades? So especially for example for customer uh, who is doing food safety maybe. So certain pesticides, okay, um, because we understand food safety, which is highly uh, depends on or highly driven by uh, regulations by the regulatory agencies, okay. So once they establish certain uh, pesticide levels, uh, it doesn't mean it will be staying there for another five to ten years. Basically, the regulatory agencies, they are reviewing all those uh, established methods almost every year or every other year. So to improve uh, the uh, sensitivity, the requirements for certain uh, uh, contaminants. Okay, so in AT45, maybe it's uh, sufficient in terms of the sensitivity for now. But in two years time or three years time, when the regulation methods is updated, maybe you need to request a more sensitive instruments to meet the requirements. So instead of purchasing a brand new instruments, we provide the customer as a, a more a economical option of doing the on-site upgrade. So your system can last for another few years, okay? Instead of purchasing a brand new instruments. So that's why we made on-site uh, upgrade possible for certain models at the moment, okay? So this is one of the key reasons. To always keep updated yourself, your instruments, your method to meet the regulatory requirements. Okay, as we mentioned, right, uh, uh, one of the few key models, uh, one of them is the LCMS 8045. Okay, it has a very uh, high scan speed. Okay, it is sensitive enough for most of the applications and it can do an upgrade to the higher, higher end model as well. Okay, so this is how the inside look like. I won't go through very details, but you can see clearly you have the Q1 collision cell as well as Q3. Okay, and all in front of the Q1, all these lenses are helping to guide your targeted analyte, targeted ions go into the Q1. Okay, so there was a major uh, upgrade in terms of from 8040 or the older models to 8045 is we are using the heated ESI source, okay? So in addition to nebulizer to drying gas, we actually implement the heating gas flow, okay? So heating gas flow is to help to guide your target analyze to go into the dissolution line, eventually go into the MS for more sensitive results. So if you can see here, we are actually doing the uh, 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 test uh, on this particular analyte. The black color is without the heating gas. Well, with the heating gas on, you can see the peak response. The signal to the sensitivity is actually more than 30 times improved. So this is why, or well, this is how we improve our uh, instruments, in how we improve our technologies to always help the customer in terms of the getting a more sensitive results, okay? So ultra-fast technology, as we mentioned earlier, the ultra-fast uh, mass spectrometry is actually Shimazu's branding. So that means when you see the UFMS, this is always refers to Shimazu, LC, Shimazu mass spec, okay? Regardless of the LCMS or the GCMS, okay? And this UFMS is actually uh, applied with our patent, original patent technologies, okay? So there are a few patent technologies. One of them is that the ions in the conventional design, right? So this is how ions travels. It's a much longer distance compared to when we are applying the UF sweeper technology. What does that mean? The longer the ion travels, not every single ion are able to make it to reach the collision cell, okay? But the shorter time the ion travels, the maximum ions can reach the collision cell. And if you do see in some of the competitive designs, uh, they are using the collision cell uh, quite in terms of the size, very big, like 90 degree. But ours is very, very small. It's, left, it's about half of the uh, conventional or other designs of the collision cell. Because we believe that the ions travels lesser distance, will be more ions collected and send it to Q3 for further detection.
okay so this is how we reduce our pause time dual time okay and eventually reduce our the total uh, um, uh, transition time from total dual time from the q1 all the way to the detector okay so this is why our data can meet at a high speed ultra fast scan speed okay and polarity switching is also very important um, polarity switching the shorter the time is uh, which allows the more transitions okay so in our lcms we are only need five milliseconds to achieve a stable quantitative accuracy with the polarity switching so if you can see from the left to the right when we are just running positive and negative separately those are the responses we are getting but when we're doing the polarity switching using five milliseconds you can see the peak response was not compromised at all we are maintaining the sensitivity for both positive and negative when we are running the positive negative switching so this is a power and this is why we are confident that our ufms technology can ensure the better quantitative accuracy with the shortest polarity switching time okay and robustness is also very important because we understand our customers most of the time they are running the samples uh, non-stop some especially for regulatory agencies for customer doing uh, BABEs every day they can have a few hundred samples okay so we did injection of 480 samples a day for continuously 25 days which makes 12,000 plasma samples. So we all know plasma samples as a biological matrix. It has a lot of background, a lot of effects, okay? But uh, after the 12,000 injections, we can see based on the area ratio, the RST percentage is still only 3.4%, which is very, which is actually indicate how robust the instrument is, okay? So again, as we mentioned earlier, upgrade to higher end is possible for 8045 to 8060 at the moment, okay? If you are interested, do contact to our uh, uh, local representative. They will share a bit more information with you. So another very important model, which was just launched last year, August, okay, is 8060NX. So if you're just looking at the scan speed, polarity switching time, MRM speed, it is the same as 8045. However, the sensitivity is so much better compared to 8045. And also it has much better improved in terms of the, further improved in terms of the robustness. So how this is happened, uh, basically we are applying a newer generation of the ion focusing and ion optics to make all this happen, to improve the performance, especially for both sensitivity, the robustness of the new models, okay? So how this, this works on the ESI, so we always believe, okay, improve the robust, robustness of the MS, we have to improve number one, what is the ions going to the mass spec? Because the instruments is very unbiased, okay? Whatever you uh, like the instruments, uh, whatever ions you go into the instruments, whatever the results is coming out. That means you put, you put in a very, very pure uh, analytes, your sensitivity, your robustness will be automatically improved, okay? But if you put in a lot of junk into the mass spec, the instrument will be done very often. The data quality will be definitely bad okay so in order to improve robustness sensitivity the first thing we developed or we further developed is on the iron source again okay so in this time we are not only include, uh, included a heated gas we also have additional focusing electro knot okay which is right here okay with a little bit of the voltage why this is to let all the contaminants neutral ions go down and avoid them to go into your mass spec okay so this is also a patent technology if you can see the patent number is right here okay so only shimazu has this function no other competitor instruments have this function okay 
and also we have improved our uh, uh, lenses different lenses okay so you can see from here okay the the the, the entrance to the ions to go into the to the mass bag is more is smaller that means it's more focused okay and this is how the real data look like with the uh, blue color is the older model and while the pink is the latest 8060NX model with the same setup or similar setup so we can see the sensitivity is actually improved three times two times this is really depends on the uh, component or the compound you are looking at okay so this is how it helps in terms of the improvement of the sensitivity and some of this is for the steroid hormone uh, uh, analytes okay and uh, scan speed scan speed is also very important as we mentioned earlier okay and um, traditionally for the all the triple quadruple methods right we are at, uh, most of the uh, competitors they are using the two mrms for per analyte per compound why because one is one ion is for uh, quantitation the other one is for confirmation so this is uh, good in most of the conventional mrm methods however because of the uh, scan speed because of the ultra fast speed we are able to provide more than seven mrms per analyte per compound okay that means within the same period of time uh, every single transitions will have the optimized collision energies okay and this will be increased in terms of confidence of the identification of the analytes okay and uh, this will be providing especially when you do the mrm spectrum when you search with a library your uh, uh, confidence level is much higher okay and it is also reduced the noise interference so this is especially important for the low level screening as well as so for example for forensic okay so this is a very useful features especially for forensic when you have to submit your results into the court okay so this is very important very uh, it provides a much higher confidence compared to if you just have uh, one qualitative ions all right and robustness so as we mentioned right so we always trying to avoid more junks going to the mass spec okay because the mass spec is very unbiased instruments whatever you let it go whatever the data results it will be showing okay so instead of applying additional uh, electron rods okay we also have the additional uh, ion focusing okay so for example the more uh, ion the, the the probe to close to the mass spec to close to the dissolution line so at the same time more ions go in but at the same time more matrix more contaminants also goes in okay so to avoid this we have the special the ion focusing units which is makes the balance between the high sensitivity and robustness so if you can see the blue color is the uh, normal esi probe okay with the conventional esi which robustness and the sensitivity are always compromise each other because the more the probe close to the dissolution line actually more junk also going to the mass spec that's why the robustness of the mass spec actually drop dramatically however in our case even we put the probe position at the closest to the dissolution line again it will still maintain robustness as well as the sensitivity so the minimize the compromise between robustness and sensitivity and so we also have some real sample this is actually the asms uh, poster so we actually uh, inject the urine again biological samples just do a simple dilution with 1000 injections this is how the robustness the instrument is still uh, it is okay and even though sometimes you can see the iron source is already dirty uh, at the bottom that's because of most of the contaminants is actually sent to the bottom of the iron source but cleaning of this part is much much easier 
compared to when your data quality is bad, when you have to clean your, uh, the inside of the Max bag. Okay, here you just need to use some solvent to wipe it without venting the system. All right, so this is how we always to improve in terms of our technology, in terms of um, our uh, data quality, as well as the robustness of the instruments. Again, as we mentioned, a lot of customers nowadays, they have multiple applications, different samples to be analyzed every day. So you will experience maybe even a few hundred of the data you're looking at. So in order to make customers' life, chemist life much easier, in our latest uh, lab solution software, lab solution insight, we implement the color coding system. Okay, so customer, you as a user, you can define whether the data, the results is uh, out of the range or is at the border of the range. So for you to review. Okay, so instead of going through every single sample, every single analyze, you can just pinpoint to certain analyze, which is bring the additional attention and easy access for you. So that's all about the technology of the LC MSMS uh, instruments from Shimazu. So in addition to just the hardware itself or just the software itself, Shimazu we also provide a, we always want to provide a total solution for the customers. So how we do it, we have this a very unique solution. When you hear method package this word. This is always refers to Shimazu solution only. Okay, so now you know when you hear UFMS, this is always refers to the hardware of Shimazu MS. When you hear the method package, which is always refers to the total solution from Shimazu. So as any of the LC MS MS technology, right? It, it can apply or can analyze multiple applications, multiple industries, okay? From life science to clinical, food, environment, pharma, CRO, any of the industry can be applied by using the LCMS technology. So for example, food safety, which is the most customers is doing, okay? Especially for uh, ASEAN region, okay? So meta package, what is meta package? Okay, so if you see here, LC MSMS meta package for residue pesticide version three. Okay, so that means in this meta package, we have high speed, we have simultaneously analysis methods for 647 pesticides. Okay, and those pesticides are actually comply with the regulatory bodies, for example, Japan, for example, the European Union, for example, the Chinese National Food Safety Standard. Okay, so in this meta package, it contains optimized LC conditions and MSMS parameters. Why these are important? This allows you as a user to quickly start your analysis without standard. Okay, to quickly start. And this is not only just a qualitative, but also quantitative. Let me take this sample. So this nine second window, 6.45 uh, to 6.6 .6 minutes, okay? Within this nine seconds, okay, there are positive and the negative compounds, total 25 pesticides, okay? Each pesticide has three MRM transitions, okay? And why this is so important? Because only the ultra fast scan speed can make this fast transition possible okay and each compound comes with the calibration curves so if you still remember calibration curves is very important for quantitative analysis okay and for the customers who is using who is doing the uh, analysis you can quickly start your quantitative analysis so in addition to pesticides, we have mycotoxin um, method package as well, which contains 25 mycotoxins, LC condition, MS conditions, and also MRM transitions. Okay. For white drugs, we have uh, 129 white drugs in just 16.5 minutes. Okay. And of course, antibodies as well, uh, antibiotics as well. Okay. 
So all these are available for food safety customers. Okay, of course, these are the whole list of the method package, not only the food safety method package. We also have the very special cell culture profiling, which is very popular, especially at this moment for the customer to be doing vaccine analysis. Because by using the cell culture, they can monitor the changes of the nutrient levels of the cell culture. Okay, so this is very helpful when customer is doing the vaccine analysis. And we also have forensic toxic uh, database. This can be applied for forensic customers for illicit drugs. Okay, so all this meta package can be purchased. But if you want to find any of the information, you can contact me, you can contact our uh, colleagues based in Philippines as well. So of course, we have our total solutions, we have uh, application notebooks for the food safety related applications as well. So if you want, all this information can be downloaded from Shimazu website. Okay, always go to Shimazu website, take a look, uh, let us know if you can't find any of the information. Okay, environment. Environment is something also very important right now, especially for the PFAS uh, analysis. So we all know PFAS analysis is a group of substances, right? So they are very, they're highly stable and resistant to degradation. So they are actually coming from many consumer products, industrial products, for example, the food packaging, the forms, the textiles, because it's so highly stable. So it actually brings in a lot of toxic potential harmful for humans and also the leaching of those PFAS substance. It actually brings a lot of environment uh, effects globally. So recently, uh, there are a lot of EPA method, ASTM methods on the PFAS testing in water, for example. Okay, it is either in drinking water, it can be in river water, it can be in surface water, waste water, different. Okay. So I'm very happy to tell you, Shimazu, we have a comprehensive PFAS solutions. And not only that, we are the second laboratory which is validated with ASTM method D7979. Okay, by using our LCMS8060, we are able to not only to identify, but also quantify, okay, 49 different PFAS uh, compounds just within 13 sec uh, minutes. Okay, and all these lists are actually listed under the ASTM method. So of course, we also have a different instrument, different solutions which compile with the uh, uh, EPA method as well. Okay, in fact, uh, for the EPA method 534, 537, it is actually uh, also using Shimazu UFMS, the LCMS 8050. Uh, okay, so uh, both 8045 and 8050 results are able to fulfill EPA's requirements. Okay, so we are not only able to detect all those 27 PFAS compounds, but we are able to quantify them uh, within the method detection limit, respectively for 8050 and 8045. The recovery was also meet the requirements of the EPA methods. Okay. And of course, if we are looking at the drinking waters, our LCMS is also evaluated uh, based on the EPA, my EPA uh, method uh, 1694 and 6810. Okay, so all the methods is already established. Application notes, publications are already ready. So if you are interested, do contact us. We can share with you more detailed information. Or if you want, you can always look in for the environmental analysis application notebook on Shimazu website. Okay. So of course, LCMS it can uh, be applied not only for the environment, food safety. It can apply in pharma impurity analysis as well. So now the most popular will be the impurities, right? The uh, carcinogenic impurities or the nitrosamines, the NSA in certain drugs, in renatidine, in metformin drugs. Okay, so all this actually uh, happened very recent, uh, back to 2018, just about two, three years ago. Okay, and because of the NDMA and NDEA was actually detected in the certain drugs. So it actually causes a worldwide recall of the sample of the drugs. Okay. And um, 
based on the US uh, FDA methods, we Shimazu, we are actually copying the UF, um, uh, US FDA methods. Uh, we are able to meet the requirements um, for LOD and LOQ of the uh, nitrosamines in certain drugs. But we never stop there. Because based on the US FDA requirements, I think there are only six or seven uh, nitrosamines are required to be tested. So we are using our instruments to further develop based on the 15 nitrosamine uh, uh, impurities. And all the results are here. You can see, okay, the LOD and LOQ. So we are not only meet the requirements, we are actually one step further. We can detect more nitrosamines within one method. And in addition, we can meet a better detection limit of the nitrosamine impurities. Okay. So in addition, ranitidine is another sample uh, of the uh, uh, drugs who has the impurity, the NMDA issues as well. Okay. So it can be analyzed uh, previously by high resolution. Now it is also can be recommend it is also recommended based on the US FDA requirements by the triple quadruple system as well. With the detection uh, with the quanti uh, uh, limit of quantitation of the 0 0.033 ppm level. So by using Shimazu uh, instruments, yes, we are able to meet the requirements from FDA for both LOD as well as the LOQ. Okay, so we did a further development based on LCMS 8045. So we are even able to reach five times more sensitive than the current requirements. So this is how important uh, I want to share with you. We are not only just satisfied with the current requirements because we understand for all the regulations, they are continuously reviewing, continuously improving, and requires consistent improve in terms of the sensitivity from the method, from the instruments. And Shimazu, this is what we are trying to do as well. We never stop at the place that we are able to comply with the method requirements. We always go one step further to prepare before the regulation is ready. Okay, so this is how powerful the Shimazu support is, and we always believe in providing a very uh, providing a total solution to our customers. So we have pharma impurities. Of course, forensic clinical is another very important uh, studies. We also have the clinical research application notebook, okay, which can be found from Shimazu website. Okay, so for clinical, usually we are looking at uh, steroid, vitamins, we are looking at uh, therapeutic, uh, uh, the TDM, therapeutic drug monitoring analysis, and of course, newborn screening as well. So the newborn screening is currently a very, very popular uh, topic. We are also, uh, we have very good success in both Singapore as well as uh, Europe uh, with sh to, uh, together between Shimazu and other uh, testing labs as well. Okay, so especially for the newborn screening, we understand traditionally the newborn screening was using the immunoassay uh, methodology. Okay, so in order to have a quick analysis, Newborn screening, we need, it's very important to have a tool that is able to access uh, for, to detect certain concentrations of the molecules, okay? So it requires a very high throughput method as well as a simple analysis, but the most importantly, the result has to be very specific, very fast, importantly, very accurate, okay? So because all the newborn screening is actually to prevent the early death of any newborns, okay? So this is how we are providing our solutions. We are actually analyze more than 20 subsidies uh, within one minute, okay? Within one minute. By using our LCMS together with the uh, neonatal solution softwares, okay? So this is actually uh, provides a very short analysis time within one minute, but a rich data, rich substance to be analyzed, more than 20. And neonatal softwares will help the customers to easy uh, analysis your data as well. Okay, so this is 
the solution we are providing with the customer okay and again we already have the publications uh, together with the chrome system uh, uh, the kits the reagent kits as well so forensic toxicology is another group as we mentioned earlier okay so we also have a different database different screening uh, uh, systems for you to choose from which contains uh, different numbers of compounds as well and all this uh, authenticated uh, database that means it has the both lc conditions as well as the msms parameters okay which always allows the customer to quick start your analysis so as a conclusion so shimazu the ufms technology provides the most sensitive ultra fast speed the unbeatable robustness and all these features allows eventually allows customers to meet the different application requirements okay and shimazu provides a very unique method package solutions for the customers uh, to start with quick start with their analysis okay and almost 150 years in the market we are not providing a local support to our customers we are always providing a global support to the customers so again back to your field your application and your research lcms technology it can be applied in many many different application fields in many many markets so always contact us if you have any new applications if you any if you need any support if you want any of the uh, solutions from us we can always provide with uh, together okay and even you are looking at uh, collaborations we can always further discuss on how we can do or how we can help you in terms of the further collaborations as well so i guess that's all i'm going to present and thank you very much for your attention i know this one hour is very long and thank you for still be with us so i think now yeah we can open up to the floor for the q a session now uh, once again thank you so please contact us reach us feel free don't be shy okay we are always here for you Okay, thank you very much.